Well, good evening. Welcome to the Friday night service here at the Refuge Center. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, you got it right the first time. Why don't we all stand this evening and before we sing some songs, we're going to ask the Lord to be here tonight. So, Father, we come to you tonight. We just, uh, we know your word says that if we ask, um, that you'll uh, bless us, Lord. And, and, and so we ask, God, that you bless us with your presence. And, Lord, we know that your word is truth, and we thank you for your word. We thank you that we can all gather together here tonight. God, I pray that your spirit would be poured out upon this place, upon our hearts, upon our minds, Lord. We just uh, we pray against any distractions tonight, Lord, and we pray that you would be glorified, Jesus, and above all. So we love you, Father. Thank you for this time of worship. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take me past the outer courts Into the holy place Past the brazen altar, Lord, I want to see your face Pass me by the crowds of people And the priests who sing your praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness it's only found in one place take me into the holy of holies take me in by the blood of the lamb take me into the holy of holies take the cold touch my lips here i am oh take the cold my lips, here I am. Take me past the outer courts into the holy place, past the brazen altar. I want to see your face, past me by the crowds of people and the priests who sing your praise. I hunger and thirst for righteousness. It's only found in one place. Take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy of holies. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Take the cold. My lips, here I am. So take me into the holy of holies. Take me in by the blood of the Lamb. Take me into the holy. Take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Oh, take the cold, touch my lips, here I am. Amen. Amen. You can be seated or feel free to continue standing and worshiping. Jesus just said, to worship in spirit and in truth. And uh, so that's always my prayer is, God, may I worship you in spirit and in truth. And I'm not going to stand up here and, or sit up here and say I even really know what that means, but I know I asked the Lord because his word gives us pretty clear, detailed instructions on how to live our life, which I'm thankful for. I don't know about you, but I need it simple. I'm glad the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, the story of Jesus is simple. And I'm glad that all he said for me to do was to believe on his name, accept him in my heart, and I'll be saved. Because if it was much more complicated, I think we would all be in trouble. Take comfort in the fact that Knowing Jesus in your heart is being a part of the gospel. 
And then we get to carry that message on out to other people. So I thank God for that. At your name, the mountain shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow. The earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. At your name, the morning breaks in glory. At your name, creation sings your story. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice. Your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your praise, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Lord of all the earth, you're the Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, in this praise, Yahweh, Yahweh, we love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Amen. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. 
It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing that again. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will rise, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, The last song is one of my favorite songs by Big Daddy Weave. Is that the one you're doing right now? Yeah. Not doing enough for the lift? No. no. Okay. Called Redeemed by Big Daddy Weave. I saw him perform this song in uh, the Washington State Fair one year, and I love it. We are redeemed. Set free. That's what this song talks about. Seems like all I could see was a struggle. Haunted by ghosts that live in my past. Bound up in shackles of all my failure Wondering how long is this gonna last Then you look at this prisoner Say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won I am redeemed, you set me free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, I'm not who I used to be, I am redeemed. All my life I've been called unworthy Named by the voice of my shame and regret But when I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet I am redeemed, you set me free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, I'm not who I used to be, I am redeemed.
Amen. Lord, thank you that we are redeemed tonight, Father. Thank you for loving us unconditionally, Lord, for sending your son to die on the cross and then to raise again, Lord, to conquer death, that today we could have direct fellowship and communion with you, Lord, that we could be in your presence, God, that we could overcome evil because, Jesus, you overcame the grave. You overcame death. So help us tonight just to embrace that, Lord. Help us to know in our hearts that we are new creations in you, Father. The old is past, and today we are new. Lord, just speak through Pastor Tyson. Bless your word, God. Bless him, Father. Thank you for his heart for you, Lord, and just pray you bless the rest of this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Refuge Center. Uh, for those visiting for the first time, am I mic'd up? Uh, okay, we're good. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so for those visiting for the first time or listening online, we are a direct overflow of Calvary Chapel Grants Pass. Uh, you guys go ahead and open your Bibles to John chapter 3. This evening as we head into Valentine's weekend, we're going to be looking at the greatest love story. Are you our love story? I'm definitely not. That's... <laughs> So John chapter 3, and what we're going to do, um, just because there's so much there, we're going to drop in in the middle, starting at verse 15, take it down, and then work our way back as time permits. So John chapter 3, beginning in verse 14, and it reads... And, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but rather have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, verse 18, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. Verse 20, for everyone who does, for everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light lest his works should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. And so in short, you guys, be encouraged that God is desiring to speak into your life and that God's heart has always been for redemption. Let's go ahead and pray and we'll see where the Lord wants to go. And so Heavenly Father, Lord God, we're so thankful for your word. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just bless this time. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just uh, speak what we need to hear. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just be sovereign just over all the distractions and the divisions, God, for those coming in who have had long days or uh, maybe trials presented. God, would you just be sovereign over these things? God, I pray, Lord, that you would just be honored in this time. God, and that you would just speak what you desire to speak. God, so we love you, we thank you, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. And so I've titled today's message, The Greatest Love Story Ever Told. And in short, what we're going to see, you guys, is that it is only the voice of the enemy that tells us that God is against us. 1 Peter 5.8 tells us to be sober, to be vigilant, right? Because the enemy of our souls roams about seeking whom he may devour. And as we jump into this passage, in short, what we're going to see is that God is willing to meet us. God is willing to speak into our lives. And you, you know, in all honesty, I take encouragement in that. I take encouragement in the fact that when I'm going through different things, that God is aware of what's going on in my life and that he's able to 
to work in my life, right? And that there's nothing hidden from him. So often the enemy does come. And, uh, you know, John 10.10 10 says that the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus has come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And so be encouraged, you guys, this evening that God wants to bring abundant life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And so be encouraged this evening, you guys, that whatever you may be dealing with, whatever ways the enemy is trying to distract you or discourage you or get in your guy's head, uh, you know, that God is able to take care of the enemy. God is able to take care of the details of our life. And so in short, Looking at a brief outline as we jump into John chapter 3, we're going to have the longing of man, we're going to have the goodness of God, and we're going to have the hope of a new start. And so what we're going to see, right, and especially as we go into Valentine's weekend, is that all of us long for acceptance. All of us long for something greater, right? You know, and on Wednesday, I was sharing with the youth and, uh, you know, was able to share a couple uh, more humorous stories in relation to Valentine's Day, you know, but the point is, you guys, is that people are going to let us down. This world is going to let us down, right? As we go throughout life, we're going to constantly come across different situations and different moments kind of where we, we were expected to go in one way or we thought we were going to go in another way. But then whatever it may be, you know, whether it was just the details of the day or whether it was temptation or whether it was a trial, right? Something comes and man, we just get wiped out, right? And in that moment, we're so uh, prone, at least myself, so prone to question the goodness of God in my life, so prone to question what he's doing. And so what we see is first and foremost that all of us long for something greater and all of us are prone to reject that which we don't fear or understand. All of us long for something greater and all of us are prone to reject that which we don't fear or don't understand. And so be encouraged, you guys, in the moment of confusion, God is willing to meet his children. Amen? Amen. And so as we jump into this chapter, what's going on, we'll kind of summarize, but a religious ruler by the name of Nicodemus has approached Jesus, right? And now we don't know much about this character, Nicodemus, although we do know that he was a religious leader, right? John 3, 1, it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And so this, this religious leader, Nicodemus, right, as part of the Pharisees, a group of 70 individuals who were over all of Israel, right, because contextually, we have to remember that Rome was in charge, but Rome left the details of smaller issues and religious issues to the Pharisees, you guys, and I bring this up because if there's someone, right, if there's someone who would have, uh, you know, knew where he stood with God or maybe had a, you know, I won't say excuse, but really had, uh, you know, his walk down. It would be this individual, right? The Pharisees, you guys, they were uh, part of what they believed. They took to the Old Testament. And so they kept over 600 rules. Let's be real. Most times I'm just trying to tie my shoes and make it to church on time, right? Like literally, like uh, I think it was a couple weeks ago, I was scheduled to come up for announcements, and I missed first service. I was late. They had to come, or I wasn't late, but I ain't no, I had lost track of time, and they had to come and get me, right? Like, hey, you're up to speak, right? And so, you know, be encouraged, you guys, uh, when we fall to the law, or when we fall to trying to keep all these rules and regulations, you guys, the law kills. And the whole point of John 3, 16 is that whoever believes in him should have eternal life, right? That means you look to the sun. That means you look to the risen Savior, that when your world's falling apart and nothing makes sense, and there's all these rules and laws and regulations, and you say, I can't make it, I can't keep this, you look up to the Savior and you say, Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, 
so sings my soul, you guys. There is redemption in the heart of God. And as a point of application, what we're going to see is that God's heart has always been for his children to be restored to him. And so what we see first and foremost, you guys, point of application is that Nicodemus was willing to seek Jesus, right? And scripture does say that he came at night. Uh, I don't, you know, people have said different reasons why he came at night. I don't think it matters. I think the scholars are so split over why he came. The point is that he came. You guys, he got up and he came to find Jesus, right? And it's, man, you have to think of the weight of this situation where a Pharisee, someone who kept over 600 lots, you know, he says, hey, there's something about this individual that I have to find out, right? And so literally the spirit of God drives him to seek out Jesus, you guys. And so my encouragement this evening is that Jesus Christ is worth seeking in your life. So often in my life, you know, uh, with the busyness of the schedule and just everything going on, you know, I don't want to get up early to read my Bible. I don't want to stay up late to pray, right? I don't want to make it to first service. (laughs) But Jesus is worth seeking, you guys. And this is going to look different for all of us. You know, I don't know what may work for you, may not work for me. And what what would work for me may not work for you. But the point is, you guys, discover the heart of God for yourself. See, you know, and this is something that we're going to get into. But I think it's key to pick up on that so often, I think one of the ways that the enemy gets in our head is that he separates the God of the Old Testament from the God of the New Testament. You guys, be encouraged that the God of the Old Testament sent his son that all the saints of the New Testament would receive redemption. And it's a glorious story when you, when you really, when you look past all that, because religion kills. Religion is boring. Religion is dead, right? And so when you get over the weight and just the heaviness of all the rules and the laws, you know, I don't, you guys, we don't have to walk with God. We get to walk with God. And what encourages me is that Nicodemus, in all his rules, in all his laws, for whatever reason, he comes to Jesus by night. You guys, Jesus is worth seeking. And what we see through the life of Nicodemus is that all of us long for something greater, right? The book of Ecclesiastes says that eternity is penned in the hearts of men. And so what that means that in my life, when I don't, I can't separate anything through different trials and different, because, you know, I don't know about you, but I'll be, you know, many days I get bogged down by the religion. Many days I get bogged down by the basic Christianity. You know, the preacher comes to preach and it's like you can already know where he's going with the text. You already know the points he's going to make. You know, the, the worship is off. Worship was great tonight, not you guys. Um, but, you know, there, there's something in the sense where we come to church, man, and if we're not careful, you guys, we lose the beauty of who Jesus is through the muck of religion. You guys don't let religion and Jesus be put together. Separate Jesus in your life because he will lead you all the way. And so first and foremost, what we see is that Nicodemus seeks Jesus, right? Secondly, what we see, though, is that Jesus is willing to turn him back around. And what I mean by that is notice Jesus's response. Pick it up in verse 4. Verse 3, I'm sorry, it says, Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. Check it out, you guys. Verse 8, the 
wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it goes or you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. And so literally Nicodemus comes to him and he says, hey, people say that you're God. People say that you're the Messiah. People say that, you know, you're the one, so to speak, right? And I think there's a little bit of Nicodemus in all of us in which we're bound by the religious laws. We're bound by the cultural setting in which we want to do good and we want to have a good life. And so we do our best to treat others with respect. And, you know, maybe we even show up in an evening service or come to prayer or whatever it may be. But Jesus, notice you guys, and this is going to be a point of application that he loves Nicodemus but he speaks truth into his life, right? Nicodemus comes and says, hey, you know, what's the deal? And Jesus throws out a, a, what looks like a parable, right? Jesus starts out talking crazy. He goes, hey, what's born of the spirit is born in the spirit. What's born of the flesh is born of the flesh. You, you can see the wind, but you can't stop the wind. What, what does that even mean, right? And what we see is that Jesus is taking Nicodemus deeper in his understanding of the law. See, when we look at this and we read this text, there's going to be a lot of things that don't make sense to us. But we have to keep in context that Nicodemus, as a religious ruler of the day, he was familiar with water baptism. He was familiar with all the prophets of the Old Testament. And so Jesus is speaking back to Nicodemus in a way that Nicodemus can understand. And so what we see in our life is that when we try to be a good person, Jesus turns us around and says, it's not about, about being a good person. It's about my son, the savior, the, the chosen Messiah. And so I encourage you, you guys, as Christians, we are always to speak truth, but we are also to receive those in air with love. I love the heart of Nicodemus, or of Jesus, you guys, that he doesn't turn Nicodemus away. He, he turns him around mentally in his own understanding of scripture, but what he does is he sends him back, right? He sends him back with knowledge of the word that Nicodemus would understand. And what we see about this, you know, what I love about this is when we continue on in the text, which we won't go there right now, what we see is that, and I personally believe that Nicodemus would go on to get saved. Nicodemus would go on to discover the Lord. And so point of application, you guys, John 3, 16 through 17, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word for love here, it means to be dearly fond of or well pleased. And so point of application, you guys, God is not angry with you this evening. God is not upset over the mistakes you've made. God is not upset, upset in the areas of your life that you can't understand. And so you're bumping your head, right? Because, and we didn't even get there. But what's so beautiful about Matthew 4, when I spoke last week out of the temptation of Jesus, is oftentimes as Christians, we have this wrong idea that if we're in temptation, we're in sin. No, to be tempted isn't sinful. To give in to the temptation, that is where sin happens, right? Right? But when you're tempted by something and you allow the Lord to lead you out of that temptation, you guys, God is glorified. God is glorified in the fact that we're fallen, but we worship him. God is glorified in the fact that we don't know what our life looks like, but we're showing up on a Friday night for a sermon. God is glorified in the fact that you don't have answers, but you worship him. God is glorified in the fact that you don't understand your brokenness, but you give it back to him. And so the application is those, those who walk in the darkness are blind. But Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, right? And so you take your darkness and you cast it away and you say, the light comes through Jesus Christ and it shines into your life. And there's nothing broken in your life this evening that he can't put back together. There's going to be sin that we need to repent of. There's going to be things that we misunderstand. But you guys, be encouraged that God is not angry with you. And so often, you guys, we get caught being a Nicodemus, being a religious ruler, trying to earn God's love 
through our behavior, you guys, this is mockery to God because when he sent his son to the cross, your sins, my sins, they were paid for in a single moment, right? And so I'm not saying that we don't do our best, but what I am saying is that in the moment of failure, in the moment of frustration, when you don't walk as you should, there's grace in those things. And so very briefly, go ahead and turn to Romans 8. And I wasn't planning on going here, but I just want to read the first few verses and allow it to just settle in over our minds. Romans 8:1, there is therefore now condemnate, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemns sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be filled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, you guys. And so for those who walk in the Spirit, you guys, for those who give their life to the Lord, you guys, there is no condemnation. So go ahead and flip back to John chapter 3, and we're going to begin to head home with a few points. And so first and foremost, we see that Jesus is worth seeking. And this is going to be however you choose to do it. You know, and while I am a believer of allowing enough time for God to really speak to you, you know, rather than two shots of espresso and a Bible verse in the morning, you know, while I am a believer of taking consecrated time before the Lord, you guys, hey, don't be stressed. You guys, God can speak to you as easy as that. God can speak to you on your way and you walk to work. God can speak to you when you take a moment to sit down and worship. God can speak to you wherever you're at. You know, so we, we get so bound within, you know, I got to be here. I got to be there Sunday and Wednesday and Friday and I need to memorize this and that. You guys, get the law out of your mind for whoever believes in the Son of God is free this evening, you guys, and so God can speak to you in the most basic elements of life. You guys, God is with you in the mundane details of life, and he's able and he's willing to speak to you if you are willing to listen. And so a couple key lessons as we turn back to John is first and foremost that when we reject God, it is our pride in that we love darkness. And what I mean by this is when we pick it up, Verse 19, it says, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. And so simply what we see you guys is that when you're turning away from God, and I'm not I'm not talking about, you know, moments of weakness or moments of, of brokenness. You, you know, part of I, I believe being successful in the Christian walk is having leisure and having you know hobbies. You know, but I'm talking about when you when the word of God comes in your life, right? Where, where the spirit comes in your life and he wants to work, and he, he gives you a, a, a moment which you're going to either be obedient or disobedient, right? He speaks clearly and says, hey, I want you to do this, or hey, I want you to let this go, and you choose in that moment not to listen. It's simply because, it's simple, it's because we love darkness. It's because we're drawn to the evilness of this life. And so I rejoice in the fact that I have accountability. I rejoice in the fact that not only do I have the word of God, but I have faithful pastors over my life who are able to keep me in check when I'm beginning to stray. And they say, hey, make a left turn. You're going in the wrong direction. Hey, slow down. You're getting ahead of yourself. You guys embrace the accountability in your life. 
embrace the areas in which God is trying to speak. And so secondly, what we see is that for those seeking truth, Jesus has paved the way. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the life, and I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so here is my question this evening for you guys. What is holding you back from a relationship with Christ? What is holding you back from surrendering more of yourself? Ephesians 2, 4 through 5 says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we are dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Even when we are dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. One author goes on to say, hey, therapy offers suggestions. Philosophy offers ideas. Psychology offers diagnosis. Counseling offers advice. Only Jesus Christ, the crucified, risen, and ascended Savior, can liberate the soul. Spurgeon goes on to say, I have not met one man who ever turned to Christ and was turned away. I am the way, the truth, and the life, you guys. And so, in closing points of application, Jesus is worth seeking. Whether it's five minutes or it's five hours, spend time with God. Get alone with him. Let him speak into your soul. Secondly, God is not angry with you. Many of you may have caught that reference to Moses and without going there, going too much into it. In the Old Testament, Numbers 21, I believe, uh, the children of Israel, as they're waking their way into the promised land, they begin to grumble and complain. And so God sends fiery serpents in there to kill them. Now, I'll be honest, in my fallen state, I'm like, what is he doing sending snakes? Like, oh, like I throw a fit and he throws snakes to kill me? Like, are you kidding me? Right? But the point is, you guys, is that God knew about this. And so literally, he puts the pole with the serpent and he tells Moses, hey, hey, make a bronze serpent and wrap it around the pole. That's when you see the medical the sign today with the snake around the staff. That's where it comes from. The Bible, it comes from the Old Testament, right? And, and, and so literally all that was required if you were bit by one of the snakes, was to look upon the staff. You guys, all that is required this evening is to look upon the crucified and risen Savior. Religion kills, but Jesus saves. The law crushes you, but Jesus saves you guys. Take comfort that God is on your side. And so as we head into Valentine's Day, you know, this weekend, I'm, I can't wait. I'm taking uh, my wife out of town. Last year, I ruined it super bad. I asked her, I was like, hey, what do you want to do for Valentine's? She's like, ah, you know, maybe just some sushi or something light, you know? And so I didn't think anything of it. I went and preached, came back home. I think I fell asleep Wrong move, right? Wrong move for Valentine's. But, he, but he, here's the point, you guys. Here's the point. This year, I wanted to make sure that we did something special. Why? Because that's my bride, you guys. That, that's the love of my life. And so if I were to not treat her as the love of my life, if I were to treat her in a way that was not honoring her, all that you could say is that I am ashamed of her or I don't love her. You guys, the heart of God this evening as we go into Valentine's is he will never let you down. People will fail you. Relationships will fall apart. Jobs will let you go. Death will come, sickness will come, life will fall apart, you guys. But Jesus, the risen, the risen Messiah, the Savior, he waits on high to rescue. I have not met one man who ever turned to Christ and was turned away. And so seek Jesus. He is worth your time. Know that he is not angry with, with you this evening and know that God's heart has always been and will always be redemption. You guys take heart, your love tonight. Let's pray. And so Heavenly Father, God, I just pray, Lord, that you would just uh, translate that word. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just speak into our life. God, the areas where some of us are hurting, 
the areas where some of us don't know what's going on. God, would we look to the Savior? God, would we throw out the law and look to the one who saves? For God so loved the whole wide world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, God. And so we confess our need of a savior. We confess our sin and we ask you to come into our lives. For those listening online or for those in here this evening not sure where they stand, God, we cast out, God, or we ask that you would just take care of the old nature. God, we invite you into our hearts God, we ask that you would lead us and show us which way to go. God, we love you, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. We bless you guys. Don't leave without getting prayer.